When it comes to the Monopoly model, the elasticity of demand matters a lot in terms of how much a particular firm can raise the price or mark price above marginal cost. So let's look at why that is graphically. So we might imagine these two firms, one has a very elastic demand and the other has a very inelastic demand. And we might imagine both firms have similar marginal costs. So the same simple marginal cost structure. Um, and if we solve these models by finding the marginal revenue, let's do marginal revenue in green. So marginal revenue, we know with linear demand functions, marginal revenue will be halfway between the demand function and the axis, marginal revenue. And we can find our optimal quantity in both models by setting marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. We've got Q star. We set our price as high as possible, which is up on the demand curve, P star. Okay, so when you compare these, you see that the firm facing a very elastic demand function can only mark up price a little bit above marginal cost, whereas the firm with the really inelastic demand function can mark up price a lot over marginal cost. And um, so the elasticity of demand is going to make a huge difference when it comes to monopolies profits. So we have to ask ourselves, what determines the elasticity of demand? And um, one of the big things is availability of substitutes. Um, we also have the percent of your budget if you have a low um, percent of your budget, then people aren't going to notice a price increase. But for really um, high priced items like cars and houses and swimming pools, people are going to notice a lot when you increase the price. Whereas things like gum and um, nail clippers, things that are really cheap, you might not notice if there was a 50% price increase. Whereas you would notice if the car you're about to buy had a 50% price increase. So the percentage of your budget matters, um, how necessary it is. Things that are really necessary like medicine um, are going to have a very inelastic demand. And of course, expectations. And when we think about availability of substitutes, that includes competitors. How many competitors' products are out there? And the fewer competitors you have, of course, the more inelastic your demand curve is going to be.